Dragon's Dogma 2 is a very large open world game with lots of secrets and hidden things that you can miss and having played the game for over 65 hours, in today's video I will be making a guide on how you can get the best start possible so that as soon as you start up the game you are able to collect tons of powerful gear, lots of gold, a couple of fairy stones to be able to teleport, on top of unlocking a couple of features, and a special item that will mark on your map where you can find the nearest wake stones and without having to travel very far, do any sort of complicated quest or exploit, this will be a very straightforward guide so you can get an amazing start. So with that being said, hello everyone, my name is Dark Hero and let's get started. You will begin your adventure in the excavation site, and once you leave, you will go from the waterfall to the border watch outpost. From there you will be told to go to Melv, so go ahead and do that. In Melv, you're going to come across a group of soldiers that are on their way to the big city of Vernworth. Accompany them and defeat the Cyclops, and you will then be able to ride the ox cart to reach Vernworth a lot quicker. In here, a little cutscene will play out, and once it's finally finished, it's time to collect the loot. Go to the merchant quarter and we'll make our way into the inn. Walk past the innkeeper and go up the stairs. Now you'll want to go into the balcony and climb into the rooftops. From here you'll have to make this jump, and once you make it, climb into this platform, and not only will you have a secret token waiting for you, but you will also find a silver rapier which is incredibly powerful for this point in the game, a fairy stone to be able to freely teleport, and a powerful pair of boots. However, that is not all, as there are a couple more locations that we're going to be visiting in town. Additionally, while near the city's gate and right next to the ox cart, you'll want to go up this flight of stairs and inside you'll find a bag with 300 gold and a chest containing a flooded bow. It's not an amazing bow for you to use, although it is quite powerful at this point in the game. You can of course sell this bow or you can go up to the armory and weapons vendor and around this area you will find an elf by the name of Glindwyr. He will be asking you to give him a bow in order to progress with his questline and I highly recommend that you do so as it is one of the very few ways in the game for you to obtain a port crystal, an item that you can place down on the ground anywhere in the world, letting you then teleport to that location much like you can teleport to the grand city of Vernworth. These port crystals are extremely limited and so I would advise you to start the quest with this character as having an additional teleport location is going to make a huge difference. Now you'll want to make your way into the noble quarters. From the end follow the path that I take you'll want to go up these stairs and head above. And once you're past it, you'll want to turn right. This is the Patrick Estate and you'll want to go up this other flight of stairs and make your way into the backyard. And from here, you'll want to jump into the balcony to open up this chest that will contain a panacea, a very powerful curative that allows you to remove any debilitation. From there, you'll want to head inside, turn right on this door and here you will find 2000 extra gold. And if you come over here to this other room, you will find a healing item. Additionally, before we make our way to the next destination, you will want to head on over to the Vermont Charnel House, which you can get to very quickly by simply following this path. We go down this flight of stairs and in this location, you'll come across a few wakestone shards as well as seeker tokens. Keep going up these stairs and just before you enter the gate, turn left. You'll want to keep going down on this corridor until the very end and follow the path that I take. And once you get close to this building, you're going to come over here, up here into the ledge. You'll want to keep walking down straight up until the very end. And once you reach the end, you'll want to jump on the rooftop. And from the rooftop, you'll want to jump onto this wooden platform. And now you're going to enter these sewers. Your pawns are going to remain behind, but that is totally fine. We're not going to be engaging in combat. If you come over here, you're going to be finding the marcher set. An armor set that looks amazing, complete with a cape and everything, but sadly it doesn't have very high stats, although it can be used by any vocation. You can use this armor set to sell later on, and you can also take this path to find an additional seeker token. And just opposite to the chest, if you come here to this other side, you're going to find a ladder that you can climb, and as you will see once you exit out of it, you're going to be inside a castle. Now if you come here during night time, you're going to need to be careful to not be spotted, because the guards will actually arrest you. And just in case they arrest you, you can actually just bust down the wall like that, and make your way out of the prison. In here you're going to be finding an additional secret token, and once you make your way past the ramp, you'll be outside and once you are reunited with your pawns, you are able to equip your gear again. But going back to the palace, if you follow this path on the left, come into the garden and jump up here, you're going to find a seeker token and if you vault over it, you can find a bunch of plants that you can use to make more curatives and you can open this chest to receive an additional fairy stone. 
Now follow the path that I take to enter the watchtower. And in here you're going to go up an elevator and find lots of goodies. As you go up the elevator you'll be seeing lots of chests for you to open. Don't worry we'll get through all of them in a moment. Walk out of the elevator and go up these stairs and you'll find a chest containing 10 explosive arrows. More importantly you will find a luxury chest containing a dragon's gate. This item will mark on your map the exact locations of any wake shards that are close to you. So it is a very valuable item for you to have this early on. You will also see a chest with a lupine bow in it, which is much more powerful than the one we found before. And now we can make our way back down the elevator. Right next to where the elevator was, you're going to find a half full lantern. And now go down this flight of stairs and you're going to be finding some extra armor. And this one does come with better stats. They're not impressive by any means, but will be better than anything you have by this point. And again, you can always sell it. Do watch your step as you're going down the stairs. Be careful not to fall off and die. Jump across these wooden platforms and keep going down. And after a couple of floors you're going to find a chest containing over a thousand gold. Down the stairs and turn right opening the big doors to enter the audience chamber. If you just keep going straight and look behind the golden throne, you're going to find a cape that you can sell for a pretty decent amount of gold. And if you come down this exact door and follow this narrow path, you're going to find the castle vault. Now in order to open this door and enter the vault, you will of course need a vault key. So in order to get it, head on over to the West Oxcart station, ring the bell and pay the toll to enter an Oxcart and quickly get to the checkpoint rest town. And while you are here, you can sell some of the gear that you already have and you don't want, and buy some of these weapons because they are much more powerful than the ones that you can find on pretty much the entire kingdom of Vermont. And among these weapons you'll even find a Guts Greatsword, so this is the recommended spot to spend money before you go on to visit the neighboring nation. You'll need to go from the checkpoint rest town and walk for a little bit until you reach the ancient battleground. So just follow the path that I take that I believe is the safest and quickest and you should be able to reach it with no problem. You're going to want to turn left and then just keep going down the slope. You can safely ignore all of these monsters as they are not going to mess with you if you don't stop and make sure that you go under the bridge. Once you are past the campsite you are almost there and if you follow this narrow path you will come across a ballista and just in front you will be able to see a dragon fighting a cyclops. Now you can use the ballista to take them down, that is totally optional, but to get the vault key as fast as possible you can safely ignore them and try to go over to the castle ruins on the left. The dragon will be busy with the cyclops so just focus on running. Once you enter the castle ruins you'll see that skeletons will start rising up. You can choose to defeat them, they're very easy to deal with or you can totally ignore them. Follow the path that I take by going up this flight of stairs and once you are outside jump down here. You can break open this shortcut to the entrance of the castle ruins and if you keep going up you're going to find this chest that is going to contain the makeshift vault key and with that you can now open the vault. But since we are here there's still a bit more loot for you to get. Of course go ahead and pick up the book that is here but also keep going up and enter this flight of stairs. There will be a cyclops lying here on the ground, but you can go around him and open up this chest to get some more powerful loot. And with that you can now teleport to Vermund to go open up that vault. And in here you'll find chests that will give you 20,000 gold, the Worm Hunter Cloak, a very powerful Daughter of the Evening Shield, a Decayed Medusa Head, and last but not least a Ring of Reassurance. And now that you have all of this gear and loot, you are more than ready to tackle the challenges that Dragon's Dogma 2 will be throwing at you. And of course if you want to you can take that same ox cart ride, go to the checkpoint town and buy even more powerful gear. But that is pretty much how you can get the best start you can get in Dragon's Dogma 2 and becoming overpowered from the very beginning. By the time this video is up, I should have already made a guide on how to unlock each of the different vocations, so subscribe to the channel to see all of that. With that being said, thank you all so much for watching, my name is Dark Hero and as always, happy hunting!